the Gardner Museum heist. The Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston was burglarized in the early morning hours of March 18, 1990, resulting in the loss of several exquisite and expensive items of art. Guards let in two individuals acting as police officers who were responding to a disturbance report. Once inside, the imposters tied the guards up and proceeded to rob the museum over the course of the next hour. The investigation has not led to any arrests, and the stolen artwork has not been returned. The case is still open. The pieces that were taken are estimated to be worth hundreds of millions of dollars by both the FBI and art dealers. The museum is offering a reward of $10 million for information that leads to the recovery of the artwork, which is the greatest bounty that a private organization has ever given. What was stolen? Art collector Isabella Stewart Gardner, who lived from 1840 to 1924, was the one who initially purchased the pieces in question, and she had every intention of putting them on permanent exhibit at the museum along with the rest of her collection. One of them was a painting by Johannes Vermeer called The Concert, which is one of just 34 paintings known to have been created by Vermeer and is considered to be the most expensive unrecovered picture in the world. The storm on the Sea of Galilee, Rembrandt's only seascape, is also absent from the collection. In addition to these works of art, thieves made off with drawings and paintings by Rembrandt, Edgar Degas, Edouard Manet, and Govert Flink, as well as a Chinese goo and a rather worthless eagle finial. The selection of the artwork baffled specialists, especially considering that more significant paintings were not damaged in any way. Because the collection and its arrangement are set in stone, the empty frames will continue to be displayed in both respects for the absent artwork and anticipation of its eventual return. Who was behind the theft? The FBI has reason to assume that a criminal organization was behind the planning of the crime. Interrogations, undercover informants, and sting operations have been the primary methods of information collection for the FBI in this investigation, since the case lacks substantial physical evidence. They concentrated their attention mostly on the Boston Mafia, which at the time was in the throes of an internal gang battle inside its ranks. Gangster Bobby Donati, who was assassinated a year after the theft, is suspected of masterminding the crime in order to secure his capo regime's release from jail, according to one scenario. According to some others, the paintings were taken by a gang from the Dorchester section of Boston. Nevertheless, the gang members continue to deny any participation in the theft, even after an undercover operation placed several of them behind bars. In spite of the fact that they were promised prize money, reduced jail terms, and even release if they produced information leading to the recovery of the artwork, all of them have denied having any knowledge or have given leads that have proved to be futile. How they stole the works. Infrared motion detectors were placed strategically around the museum to track the burglars every step. The Dutch room on the second floor was the first room that they visited, but the steps that they took there were not recorded until 1.48 in the morning. It had been 13 minutes since they had completed taking down the security guards. Throughout that time, they may have been waiting to make sure that the police had not been notified. The alarm started going off as the thieves got closer to the paintings in the Dutch room, which is the kind of gadget that would ordinarily go off if a customer got too near to a picture. It was shattered by the robbers. They hurled the storm on the Sea of Galilee and a lady and gentleman in black onto the marble floor, which caused the glass frames of the paintings to break. They removed the canvases from their stretchers by cutting them with a blade. They also took a big oil painting of Rembrandt's self-portrait down off the wall, but placed it leaning against a cabinet instead of hanging it back up. According to the investigators, they suspect that they may have deemed it to be too big to carry, maybe because it was painted on wood rather than the more durable canvas that the others were painted on. Instead, the burglars made off with a little self-portrait etching by Rembrandt about the size of a postage stamp, which was displayed underneath the bigger painting. They took the painting's landscape with obelisk and the concert out of their frames and relocated them to the right side of the room. An old Chinese goo was the last thing to be removed from the room. 
At 1.51 in the morning, one of the thieves resumed their work in the Dutch room while the other went to the opposite end of the second floor and entered a tiny passageway that was known as the Short Gallery. Soon after, the second thief arrived. They started taking the screws out of a frame that was exhibiting a Napoleonic flag in this room, which was most certainly an attempt to steal the flag. It seemed as if they gave up in the middle of the process since not all of the screws were removed. And in the end, they just stole the exposed eagle finial that was affixed to the top of the flagpole. In addition, they removed five drawings by Degas from the space. The most recent piece to go missing was a painting by Shea Tortoni, which was kept in the blue room on the first level. During the time that the thieves were present on the premises, the motion detectors in the blue room of the museum did not pick up any motion at all. The only footfall heard in the chamber that night were those of Abbott, who had walked past the gallery on his patrol on two separate occasions earlier in the evening. The robbers made one last check on the security personnel and asked them whether or not they were experiencing any discomfort as they prepared to depart. After that, they went to the office of the director of security where they stole the data printouts and video cassettes that recorded their admission on the closed circuit cameras. Additionally, they grabbed the video cassettes that contained their entrance on the open circuit cameras. The data on the movement was still recorded on a hard disk and it had not been altered in any way. The picture frame for Shea Tortoni was discovered on the desk of the security director. After that, the burglars went about removing the artwork from the museum. The doors to the museum's side entrance were opened twice, the first time at 2.40 a.m. and the second time, for the last time, at 2.45 a.m. The heist took 81 minutes to complete. When the next shift of guards came later in the morning, they tried to make contact with someone inside so that they might be allowed in, but they were unable. At that point, they understood that something was wrong. They contacted the director of security, but when he entered the building with his keys, he discovered that nobody was working the watch desk. He then phoned the police. The building was thoroughly examined by the police, and the guards were located in the basement with their chains still on. Details on what they stole. 13 works were taken. The FBI first believed that the hall was worth 200 million in 1990, but by the year 2000, they had increased this estimate to 500 million. In the latter part of the 2000s, there was speculation among art dealers that the hall would be worth 600 million. It was thought to be the most valuable museum theft up until 2019, when the Dresden Green Vault was broken into, at which point it was exceeded. The Dutch room was robbed and the most priceless paintings were removed. One of them was a picture called The Concert by Vermeer, 1632-75, a Dutch painter. It is one of just 34 works that are ascribed to him. The picture is responsible for 50% of the hall's worth, which was estimated in 2015 to be 250 million. It is possible that it is the most precious item that has ever been stolen in the history of the globe. The burglars targeted masterpieces by the Dutch painter Rembrandt that were located in the same room, 1606-69. Among them was his sole seascape, the Storm on the Sea of Galilee, which was also the most valued of the artist's paintings that were taken that night. Since the theft, Several estimates have put its worth at about $140 million. The other pieces by Rembrandt that were stolen were a lady and gentleman in black and a self-portrait etching that was about the size of a postage stamp. The latter had been taken before, but it was recovered in the year 1970. It is possible that the robbers took landscape with obelisk because they thought it was a Rembrandt. The painting had long been ascribed to Rembrandt until it was discreetly credited to his disciple, Govert Flink, 1615-60, a few years before the crime. A bronze jug measuring about 10 inches or 25 centimeters in height was the last object to be removed from the Dutch room. The beaker was one of the earliest works in the museum, dating back to the Shang Dynasty in the 12th century BC. In ancient China, it was traditionally used for pouring wine. It is merely a few thousand dollars, according to an estimate of its worth. The Museum Statute 
Because Gardner's will stated that none of the items in her collection should be moved, the empty picture frames for the paintings that were stolen continue to be displayed in the museum in the locations where they were originally hung as a placeholder for the possibility that the paintings will be returned. Due to the limited resources of the museum, as well as the absence of an insurance coverage, the director reached out to the auction houses of Sotheby's and Christie's to ask for assistance in offering a prize of $1 million within three days. In 1997, this figure was bumped up to $5 million. In 2017, it was increased to a total of $10 million, with the provisional expiry date being December 31st of that same year. After receiving a flood of information from the general public, this incentive has been increased. It is a record for the most money that a private organization has ever awarded as a reward. Information that directly leads to the recovery of all of their belongings in excellent condition is eligible for the award. Anyone who voluntarily returns the art items will not be subject to prosecution, according to statements made by federal prosecutors. In addition, the statute of limitations ran out in 1995, which means that the thieves, as well as anybody else who was involved in the crime, cannot be brought to justice. So there you have it. Do you think that the thieves would have been able to commit the same crime with today's technological advances and would have outsmarted any museum security protocol? Let us know in the comments below. If you found this video fascinating, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more awesome stories. Thanks for watching and see you soon in the next video.